Yo, what's up? Welcome back to Rebreak Radio. This is episode 12. Today we're gonna talk about the Nintendo Direct. We're gonna talk about the Apple event. We're gonna talk about Minecraft and Bethesda and the tribute implemented into the Switch. Um, I'm joined by my good friend, Oscar. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing well. That's good. That's cool. That's cool. Yes, and I'm excited to talk about all the news that we have today. Yeah. Yeah, but first uh, we're gonna do some... Uh, what have we been playing lately? You hadn't really played anything, right? You just uh, dipped your toes just into tried. Titanfall and Need for yeah, Speed. Yeah, Titanfall too. Yeah. So, but that's that's it was fun. Yeah, we we're, we're gonna do a Titanfall two let's play soon. So we'll we'll go into more things there. But yeah, I've been uh, I've been playing. Uh, I, I'm un- unfortunately the first part of our po- podcast last week got corrupted. So my initial impressions of Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle were lost there. So uh, we 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 recorded. Uh, five episodes of uh, arcade of us playing Mario Plus Rabbit. So we have some of the impressions there. So I'm just gonna quickly just summarize my impressions of that game. <clears throat> Basically, I think this is really one of the best games of the year. Uh, I really love Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Uh, I only have like minor gripes with the game, and that is like I just want to be able to zoom in and out with the camera. Uh, and, um, I just wish you could actually have three Mushroom Kingdom characters on your team and all that. Like, there are only, like, minor gripes with the game, so I really just love the game overall. I think it's a great game. The gameplay is awesome. Um, and then just my general gripe when it comes to RPG elements in games. Uh, we don't have to get into that. If you want to hear more about my yeah. thoughts on that, just watch the <laughs> Minecraft Let's Play. <laughs> That's just like 40 minutes of us talking about RPGs. That's just ranting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Perfect for, my, for a Minecraft Let's Play. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's get into the meat and potatoes of my, of not Minecraft, of Metroid Samus Returns. <laughs> Which is the second game you've been playing? Yeah, Metroid: Samus Returns. So, uh, you you're a big Metroid fan, right? Yeah, I've played most Metroid games, I'd say. Yeah. So why don't you uh, let's treat this as a little interview? You interview me about this game. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, I know you've played Metroid Fusion. I've played every Metroid game except the Prime games. I've dabbled in oh. the Prime game. Prime games. <laughs> oh, this this is interesting. So first of all, what would you say is your favorite Metroid game? I would say my favorite is Zero Mission. Zero Mission. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. The the controls are fluid and uh, well, it's it's traditional. It's just a remake of the original, right? So yeah, with some added stuff yeah. to it. So where would you put Metroid: Samus Returns uh, on your top list of Metroid games? So it's tough. I think uh, Samus Returns adds a lot of cool stuff to the game, but at the same time, it drags out like a lot. It it's a really long game. It took me sixteen hours to beat. I think. Wow. Yeah, and that compared to Zero Mission, Zero Mission is a four-hour game. Um, Mm. So this is a really long game, and I think they made it way too long and uh i haven't played the original samus return and uh, return to samus return of samus on game boy but i've played the fan remake am2r which was one of my favorite games uh i don't know if uh, i didn't enjoy samus returns as much and i don't know if that's just because my tastes have changed or whatever i'm gonna go back to previous metric games later to mm-hmm. just kind of see how I feel about the series in general, because I have Zero Mission on my top ten. Um, Maybe it's not supposed to be there anymore. Yeah, it's uh, it's some- <laughs> it's something I'm actually thinking about. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go back to other Metroid games later and see how I feel about them, because something that I've noticed when I played Metroid: Samus Returns 
is that Metroid just a very clunky game? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the controls or just the, the how the story is introduced or what is your what do you think is clunky? Just the ma my major point is that it's clunky to get into the morph ball and you have to use the morph ball a lot in Metroid games. You have to yeah. crouch and then you have to get into the morph ball. And that is always <laughs> yeah, true. so extremely clunky because you have to use it a lot and you have to use it to avoid attacks and you have to do blah, 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 all that different stuff. But uh, let's just get away from the <laughs> clunkiness of the Metroid series in general and just talk about yeah. Samus Returns. But, but I have a question because you said that uh, like the game was long. Yeah. And, and I wonder what did they fill in the gaps with? Because the, the original... It's probably pretty short. I know you played the the fan remake, and I did too. Yeah. Uh, so h how is this different from the from the original game? So I think every mm -hmm. every iteration of Samus Returns have forty Metroids that you have to kill. There are forty Metroids, and uh, at least when I played AM2R, I did not think the Metroid fights got uh, repetitive. No. But I really thought they they were repetitive in this game. And I think the main reason for that is because I don't know how many areas were in the original game and AM2R, but in this game there are eight areas. Um, mm -hmm. And there are, like, I think it was area six and seven. Six has just one Metroid in it, and seven has, like, three so That's I feel like not much at all. I feel I I do not remember entirely when I played AM2R. So I'm kind of lost in that game, but uh, I th feel like there were more Metroids in each area, which just made the game kind of shorter. So I feel like this game was uh, dragged out because they have more areas and less Metroids in each area, wow. and also the areas are huge. They are huge. Like, I think it's area two. That that area is massive. It is really big. Insane. Yeah, it <laughs> is huge. And I think that also drags out the game a lot. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I, the game in its core is good. This is a good game. You should play it if you're a Metroid fan. And also, if you... It is a very hard game as well. Um, and... They have added a lot of cool things. There's one of the boss fights in the game. It's one of the coolest boss fights in the series, I would say. Uh, and they've also done some twists uh, to the story as well. It still doesn't... The main... The concept of the story is still the same. But there's there are some minor tweaks to it. Uh, especially okay. the final boss. The final boss of the game was not in Metroid 2 at all. So... Uh, and it's a cool, it's a cool boss. Um, but yeah. Oh, I see. <clears throat> because the original final boss was the Metroid Queen, I think. Yeah, the Queen Metroid is the final boss of that game. Yeah. Well, you don't want to spoil it. Like, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. It's a, it's a cool boss, and it actually ties into Metroid Prime, as far as I know. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, now, I, now I want to play it just to see. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's on 3DS, so you can, you can get it. Um... <clears throat> And uh, so let's get into the graphics of Metroid Samus Returns, uh, which is they they have these three dimensional graphics in a two at a two D plane, of course, uh, and they don't have the pixel art of the previous two uh, D Samus retro Metroid games. And I think it works well. I think it works really well. The game is really beautiful, especially when you play it in three D. You have to play this game in three D. Uh, at least just. The first few hours of the game played in 3D, it's gorgeous. Uh, I think I got a lot of eye strain towards like the <laughs> like seven, eight, nine hour mark, so I just stopped uh, using 3D. Uh, and then I started using 3D towards like the more the more special parts of the game, like one of the boss fights and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because there's one of the boss fights that's it's uh, it takes place in like this massive hallway basically, where you're just seeing like an infinite hallway go into the deep like de deeply into the screen and it looks so cool. Wow. Uh, yeah, it looks really cool in three D. <clears throat> and also when you're on the surface, uh, 
in in every other uh 2d metric game where you're like on the surface of the planet it just looks like uh, yeah. a plane you know like it's just flat because it's a 2d game but here it looks like it's a huge field of like rocks and mountains and all that it's really cool and when you're climbing like the uh some like rock walls and stuff like that it's a little bit like uh you know when we played inside uh how yeah. it is like a three-dimensional world but it's in 2d but you're playing in 2d uh and yeah Samus returns is similar but only in the backgrounds and not in the foreground um i remember that inside was very good at that yeah it was you it was always linear in a two-dimensional direction but it the character moved uh, along a third dimensional uh, path so he sometimes was closer to the screen and yeah it just felt really good yeah and they play a lot with uh with camera angles in the game and they play a lot with uh, with just um they they've taken a lot of the good things from Metroid Other M and put into this game like a lot of the more action moments of Other M are in this game mm. and it feels really good uh, and also you have the counter move. You've seen it, right? I haven't seen it. I probably should have. So, How does it look? So um, when you press, I think it's X. Yeah, it's X. Uh, basically you shoot with Y and you jump with B and then you have the counter on X. And when you use that, Samus does like this uppercut move basically with her, with her arm cannon. Okay. And a lot of the enemies in the game are designed to attack you with like close quarters attacks. So uh, they they will do this like little um, flash before they're about to attack you, and that that is kind of your indication that okay you're you should counter now because he's gonna attack you. So when you counter, you basically leave them weakened and then you just shoot them uh, with your arm cannon. This sounds really good because it's Samus has never been good in close quarters. Yeah. She's always been very vulnerable as long as if somebody gets really close to her, she can't really do anything. And it doesn't really tie into her character because she's really strong. She's yeah. supposed to be. So this is really fitting, I think. Yeah, this is this is actually a really good thing for the series because there are a lot of times where uh, when you're meeting like bosses and stuff in in Metroid games, and you don't have any way to defend yourself other than jumping and using your cannon, and it, pretty much every enemy in Metroid games are designed to attack you physically. Mm. So there's just a lot of times where you just you just get hit and hit and hit and hit all all the time, <laughs> and your only savior is having a lot of energy tanks. And that's kind of solved with the with this counter move. The counter move is actually pretty hard to to get in right. So you have to kind of really really learn how to use the counter move, and it's it's really satisfying to use it. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah. So I think it's generally a really good game. Uh, I think it's too long, and um, they have some thesis in the game that they're actually gonna make a new Metro game. Yeah. So uh, basically, you have some some kind of uh, shozo lore in the game that shows like because the story basically is that uh, the shozo they arrived on SR three eighty eight, and this is where the yeah. Metroids. Uh, oh, oh no! This is where the X Parasite comes from. Mm -hmm. The X Parasites are the main like enemies in Fusion, so they arrive on this planet and they find the X-Parasite and in order to combat the X-Parasites the Choso creates the Metroids. Yeah. And then like they realize uh, after it's done like the Choso and the Metroids have this like friendly pact basically. Um so they they live peacefully with each other until the Metroids evolve and have this like evolutionary cycle which is why you get the alpha metroids the beta metroids zeta metroids all these different kinds of metroids as they evolve yeah uh, and that's when they get more aggressive and that's when uh a lot like a majority <laughs> of the chosos on the planet get uh exterminated yeah they're not th they're not cute anymore yeah 
<laughs> there are no pets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't keep a Metroid as a pet. They will kill you. Yeah. Uh, and basically, like, this isn't a spoiler for the game. I honestly don't even know how you unlock these. I just saw it on Game Explain. <laughs> but anyway, like, this is not really a spoiler for the game itself because this is in the past. Uh, and basically, like, okay, you can, if you don't want to hear this, just mute for, like, a few, like, a few seconds or something. And then we'll be back. Um, so basically, the 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 crux of it is that uh, they call for another uh, another uh, group of Choso to come and save them from the planet. But it turns out to be that this is a rogue uh, group of Choso, and they killed these group of Choso and, and instead. So basically, wow. a lot of people are speculating that the next Metroid game will be Samus versus this rogue group of of, of Choso. Because we haven't actually seen any Choso, though, in earlier games. They've always been thought of as, like, dead or extinct. Yeah, I think. yeah, exactly. So I think that would be a really interesting, really interesting game. Uh, mm-hmm. And, okay, so... We're no longer in spoiler territory. <laughs> no longer yeah. in spoiler territory. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll put up some some things on the screen. I don't know. Anyway. But, but you know, you spoke about a new game. And I immediately thought about this teaser trailer for Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. Maybe it could be Metroid Prime 4. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it could be possible. Yeah, maybe. But you play the game, so I, I guess you know better about the ending. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's very clear how because apparently this game was initially um, uh, what's it called uh, pitched to Nintendo as a Metroid Fusion remake, um, and then it turned into a Metroid Two remake. Uh, probably for because Nintendo wanted it to be <laughs> Metroid Two because it's <laughs> not a pretty good game. Uh, but it's very clear there are a lot of ties to Metroid Fusion in in this game. Uh, mm. There is a certain point where you get to see the X Parasite. So anyway, uh, it's in a cutscene and it's not even like it's not a battle or anything. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, good game. You should get it if you're a Metroid fan. If you haven't played any Metroid games before, play Zero Mission instead. This is a very hard game and a very long game. So I think Zero Mission is the best introductory introductory game for a new Metroid fan because it's a it's a short game. It's a it's an easier game than this. So play few play Zero Mission, um, and uh, then you yeah. can play this game. So yeah, uh, yeah. So let's get into. Let's get into Steam World Dig 2. We've talked for a, for a while now. We should get into the news. But I'll just go quickly into, into Steam World Dig 2. It's an awesome game. You should play it. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's a really good game, actually. Like I I like it more than, than Samus Returns. But uh, Samus Returns is still a great game. Steam World Dig 2 is a better game. <laughs> But yeah, uh... we spoke like in, for like ten minutes about <laughs> Samus Returns, and then we're like, Steam World Dig, it's better. <laughs> Go play this instead. Yeah, uh, I would, I would, uh, if you haven't played any Steam World games before, uh, Steam World, the, the original Steam World Dig is free right now on Origin, so go get it, play it. If you like it, get Steam World Dig too. Finish Steam World Dig for, uh, uh, first, of course, and then play too. Then play Heist. Heist is a great game. So. Anyway. Let's get into the news, so we'll get into that right after this break. Alright, so it's time for the news. So the first news story here is that uh, hackers have found this hidden a Nintendo Switch NES emulator in in the Switch, and uh, it turns out to be after some speculation and just um, after some speculation and uh, research from a lot of Nintendo fans, it seems to be a tribute to Satoru Iwata, the uh, late 
president of Nintendo who passed away from, I think it was a tumor or cancer. I don't remember, actually. It was something like that mm-hmm. uh, two years ago on July 11th. So fans have reali- have found out that uh, there is a emulated copy of uh, NES Golf in every copy of the Switch. Um... And the way you activate this game, and as actually pl- able to play it, is that on July 11th, the day when he died, you pick up your Joy-Cons, and you make the directly-to-you motion that Satori Iwata did during the Nintendo Directs. And then uh, a little voice clip of... Iwata from a Nintendo Direct will play and then you get to play the game. That is amazing. Yeah, it is really... Like, that just really shows <sighs> how loved he was at Nintendo. Yeah. The fact that they have this really intricate tribute to him in every copy of the Switch. It's this could really be the cool. biggest Easter egg ever, I think. Yeah, and uh, I think a lot of people are looking forward to July 11th next year, so we can actually try this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, like, see if if it's if it works as people have, if, it, as it seems like it's supposed to work. Just yeah, uh, you need to tell me if this works. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, that's basically it. Uh, it's a really awesome tribute to to Satori Iwata. Um, yeah, like uh, Satori. If you don't if you don't know about Satori Iwata, um, go to uh, Digital Gaming and look for their documentary about Satori Iwata. It is probably like one of the most beautiful videos I've ever seen. It's like twenty minutes where they just go through Iwata's entire um entire career at Life? nintendo and oh, yeah. uh you, you can just see like how much he impacted the industry um to to name a few uh he saved earthbound from development hell so earthbound wouldn't have existed without iwata he was solely responsible for kanto being available in gold and Sun, in gold and crystal no gold and silver uh, thanks to some kind of compression magic, he was able to fit both continents in a Game Boy cartridge. So, just one of the most magical moments in gaming history when you finally, when you actually realize that Kanto is in the game. It, wow, like, I was one of the... That's how a sequel is supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. The, the new Pokemon games will never be able to top that. Yeah, and that was like, I figured that out on my own. Like, that was before internet and everything. And I figured that out on my own. And that was one of the most mind-blowing moments of my life. Uh, but yeah, it, it was... He's done a lot of uh, cool things. Like, he was behind the DS, the Wii, the 3DS, the Wii U, and the Switch. And the saddest thing about everything is that he didn't get to see how massive of a success the Switch is. Like, he just yeah. he just endured doing the failure, like, the initial fa- failure of the 3DS, but later it kicked on. Um, and just the failure that was the Wii U, like, there were stories all the time of him just, like, cutting his paycheck in half just so the Nintendo wouldn't have to uh, fire any employees. And uh, there were all these just stories of him because of the Wii U just completely failing. And then he passed away, and now the Switch is one of the biggest successes since the Wii. And it's so sad that he never he got a, to see it. He was a great leader, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Did great things at Nintendo. Yeah, and this tribute alone shows how much people loved him at, the, at com- that company. So yeah, uh, rest in peace, Satoru Iwata, and uh, let's get on to the next story. And it's a little bit of a happier story, more hopeful story for the future of Nintendo in general. So uh, Pete Hines of Bethesda 
came out and said that uh, the the games that they have on Switch right now, which is Skyrim, Doom, and Wolfenstein: The New Colossus, are not the only games that they're gonna release on this platform. They're very hopeful for the future of the Switch, and they're actually uh, they're talking about having they're in constant conversation with Nintendo, and they really want to make sure that Bethesda is a big part of the Nintendo brand, basically. They want to make sure that there are a lot more of Bethesda games in the future on Switch. This is really cool. Yeah, it's really awesome, actually. One of the because... biggest third-party publishers going, like, deep on the, on the Switch. Yeah, and it's like when you think of um, consoles, it's uh, I think it's a good way to get games to be more... Uh, I don't know, but when I play a console game or when I play on a console, I I tend to be more uh, like bought into the games that I'm actually playing. I think immersed so, into the game. You mean? Yeah, but I'm like I'm more. If I play a PC game, it's just another game. But if I play it on a console, it feels like it feels more like a, like a real product. Like, yeah, yeah kind exactly. Of. I feel the same way. I feel like whenever I play a game on PC, like, yeah, it's great. You get better <laughs> graphics. You get 60 frames per second and all that. But it just doesn't feel like a real game <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. It just... Anytime I just play a game on a PC, it just feels so crappy and unstable. Yeah, and it's like it doesn't make things stand out. There's like a thousand PC games, it feels like. Yeah. But when you, you, you come, become established on a Nintendo... Uh... Like platform or a console in general. I mean, Nintendo is a really good console for this. <laughs> like, the Switch seems like a good console for this. It feels like uh, games become more like of a mainstay to the. It's like when you have Zelda, you expect to have more Zeldas, <laughs> and you value their their release. <laughs> I hope they make game for the Switch. Do you, do you think like... do you think this will lead to Bethesda making it an exclusive Switch game? I kind of hope so. That would be really cool. Do you think this will lead to a Mario plus Rabbit esque relationship with Bethesda, where Bethesda actually makes a Nintendo game? Uh, that would be really nice. I, I would enjoy that, but I think an exclusive is good enough. Yeah. Also. So let's for a for a short moment here. What uh nintendo franchise would you like to see a bethesda studio work on so obviously we got some bethesda games like doom we have wolfenstein we have uh skyrim and fallout we have uh um the evil within we have a lot of different kinds of games so which uh, nintendo franchise would you like to see bethesda work on okay maybe metroid yeah it, it, would, be it would be cool, cool to see like a like Doom, like yeah, Metroid. the Doom developers working on <laughs> on Metroid that would be dope as hell. Just punch those fucking <laughs> space pirates into the ground. <laughs> yeah, that would be epic. Yeah, that would be a def definitely a very different take on on Metroid. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be cool also if they could make like a new uh, new game uh, series that's exclusive to Nintendo consoles. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of uh, Bethesda games have a very realistic art style and obviously like on on the Switch, which is a less powerful console, it would fit a lot more to have a more uh cartoony style game. Um because it it, it those kind of games look better on lesser hardware. Yeah. Uh so yeah, I would definitely would like to see them make some new IP and doesn't necessarily have to be exclusive to the Switch, but a game that fits more on that platform, then they can release it on every other platform as well. Yeah. But yeah, let's hope this uh, this relationship between Nintendo and Bethesda is fruitful and we get a lot of cool games out of it. I just... Do you, did you not also hear that Bethesda said they were going to release a new game this year? Um, because I, I think there was one of the the people working at Bethesda that was actually one of the higher payroll people uh, said in an interview that they were going to release a game uh, 
uh, this year. The year and on. then, uh, of of course, he uh, uh, he uh, said on Twitter like, "Oh, forgive me, it was nothing or something." Don't you, don't you mean that's Doom? I don't you think that's just Doom because Doom is coming out this holiday. It might be. Yeah, it'll yeah. probably Doom. Yeah. Okay, uh, but yeah, uh, Doom is coming out. We're going to talk more about uh, the Nintendo Direct in general later in the topic section of this show. Uh, but yeah, they announced Doom and Wolfenstein coming out to the con- to Switch. Doom is coming out this holiday, and Wolfenstein the New Colossus is coming out uh, early 2018, I think it was. Or maybe it was just 2018, I don't remember exactly. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's yeah. get into the next story, which is that minecraft's better together update is now live on every platform nice. except the switch <laughs> which sucks <laughs> yeah because this means we can't play together <laughs> yeah <laughs> still but yeah the, the minecraft better together update is finally live which means uh, the better together update is the update where every authorized version of minecraft uh is can play together with each other uh, author- by authorized, I mean every every platform that has been authorized to be cross-platform uh, can pr- can play together. And so the exclusion to that is older versions of Minecraft, like the PS3 version, the Xbox 360 version, the Wii U version, as well as the newly announced new 3DS version of the game. But also, yeah. unfortunately... The PS4 version and the Vita version of the game, because Sony are hassles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, basically PS4 every... uh, players can uh, keep to themselves. They think like they are better <laughs> than everyone else. They can't play with the rest of the rabble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, the Xbox One version, mobile versions, VR versions, and Windows 10 versions of Minecraft can play together right now. And the Switch version will, and the Switch will get the update this winter. So yeah, that's the update on that, and we're very excited about it. Yeah, uh, we are going to play some Minecraft, I think, together. Yeah. Once that update is live. And the way Switch. the way it will work, uh, at least on Switch, I think. Uh, I don't. I I think it's every every version of the game. I'm not sure though. I think every version of Minecraft. Uh, the new version of Minecraft which is the one with the Better Together update, will just be called Minecraft, and it will be a separate game. So, for example, on the Switch, if you, were to own, if you have a Minecraft Nintendo Switch Edition on your Switch, uh, you will get a separate download that will be called Minecraft. Simply Minecraft, no subtitle. Um, and that's how it will work on, I think, every version of the game. So if you want to play the old version <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> you can still play that. And then you have the fully up-to-date version of Minecraft as well. But you can just delete the other version if you don't want it. Yeah. All right. Yes. So the next story here is about the new Pokemon movie. Po- Pokemon the movie I Choose You. Which is the 20th Pokemon movie. And... It is a retelling of the first episode of Pokemon. (laughs) And they released a a fully localized version of the trailer. I watched it. It's great. I'm so excited to see this movie. Apparently, they're showing it in theaters. I don't know if that's going to happen here in Sweden, but I would totally watch this in theaters. Um, But yeah, along with this, there is a new... There is a special Pikachu event in... Pokemon Sun and Moon. So if you take the code, I don't know where the code is, but uh, I know you can get the code somewhere. I'm sure if you Google it, but if you apply, if you take this code and enter it into your copy of the game um, at uh, during different time uh, spots that when you you'll get a Pikachu wearing a certain hat. Yes. So if you if you apply if you enter the code between uh, September nineteenth and twenty five and twenty fifth, you'll get the original Ash Ketchum hat from the Kanto and Johto regions. 
so it's the original um the original iconic hat that that he wears in the original in the original uh uh season of pokemon seasons of pokemon then if you apply it from uh 26 to october 2nd you'll get the hoenn region hat from October 3rd to 9th, you'll get the Sinnoh region hat. From 10th to 16, you'll get the Unova region hat. From 17th to 23rd, you'll get the Kalos region hat. And from 24th to the 30th, you'll get the Alola region hat. Yeah, so you, you really like the cat show, so you're kind of like hyped for this, right? Yeah, and I have two versions of the game, so I think I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna enter the original hat into one of my versions of the game, and then I'm gonna get the Kalos hat in another version of the game. I think that's how I'm gonna do it. But yeah, if you want the original hat, it is gone on Tuesday. So the twenty, like on the twenty sixth, you cannot get it anymore. Like, and, and since we're recording this episode on the twenty fourth, and I'll probably get it up later today. Mm-hmm. Monday is the only time, on the only day you can get this hat. So if you want the original a Pikachu wearing the original hat, be quick and get it now. And also, these Pikachus will Use also quick attack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these Pikachus will also have moves corresponding to the moves that Pikachu uh, knew in that in those so- seasons of Pokemon responding to that hat. This is interesting, I guess. This is good. Yeah, so basically, if uh, I would assume that if you were to get the Sinnoh hat, for instance, Pikachu will learn, will uh, know Volt Tackle, but if you use the Nova version of the hat, he'll learn, like, Electro Ball. So, <laughs> maybe there are also, like, value differences to each hat as well, because Volt Tackle is obviously <laughs> the better attack. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's also, if you watch the pokemon if you watch the movie in the theaters you will receive a qr code that will give you uh, a pikachu wearing the hat that ashes the ash wears in the movie so this is and the hat he wears in the movie is kind of a redesigned version of the original hat yeah and i think it looks really good Uh, you can see a picture of it here in the article uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's it uh, about this story. How how do you feel about this? Do you think it's a cool thing? I think it's cool. Uh, I've kind of seen uh, some of these uh, models before for Pikachu because I've, uh, you know, the the game was uh, data hacked. Yeah, yeah, these have been in the game for a while. Yeah, so it's it's nice to see that they actually are reaching out with this event because I know that Nintendo. I'm pretty sure they have made Pokemon events that actually have never released uh, or they have not been like available for everyone. Yeah. This, this is very nice. Yeah. Also, uh, another thing that's notable as well, you can only enter the code once. So be careful and pick the, per- the version of Pikachu that you want. Uh, and obviously, if you have multiple versions of the game, you can enter multiple ones. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, I assume it's the same code. For everyone, and it can be or maybe you get it in an email or something. I don't, I don't know. Pokemon.com. Anyway, uh, have you watched the trailer for this movie? Uh, I have not. It is. I probably have, but I don't remember. It is a beautiful. It's a gorgeous movie, and it really like it, it's. Uh, it seems like it's a really awesome retelling of 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 the of the story, and uh, yeah, it seems yeah. like it's a really good movie. So I'm I'm pretty excited to watch it, especially since like every other Pokemon movie have been based have been this just like <laughs> like oh it's uh, blah 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 and they're legendary legendary Pokemon yeah it's the legendary Pokemon and fighting legendary Pokemon <laughs> yeah and it's always like uh, oh yeah uh, Ash met this legendary Pokemon and then when you keep watching the show it's not canon. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer canon so yeah the movies are the this like weird separate thing but yeah i hope like if the pokemon movies in the future like i hope it's just like this retelling of certain special moments of the show like that would be awesome or like some kind of separate stories entirely 
Um, yeah. That was maybe fun. not have Ash as the main protagonist, or maybe just make some short story that's actually like uh, a bit uh, that doesn't have to be canon. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Make Ash uh, like. Uh, Make Ash become older. <laughs> yeah, I, that would be awesome. Like, just imagine a movie that's about, like, Ash when he's, like, an adult and he's, like, a uh, Pokemon champion and all this stuff. Like, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be that would be probably what everybody wants. Every long-term... I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, <laughs> yeah. but it would be cool. Yeah, it, it, Ash, it would be Ash, Shippuden. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the next story here, which is the Apple event that happened on, I think it was September 13th. Uh, so yeah, Apple announced a lot of new products. They also announced their new headquarters, which look amazing. They look really cool. Apparently it was some, like based on like some sketches that Steve Jobs had back when he was still alive. Uh, and it's called basically Apple Park. And this is this huge, really cool uh, building. Uh, they also announced the Steve Jobs Theater, which was the theater that the event was in. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a nice, beautiful theater named after Steve Jobs. Uh, and it was also cool just watching in the they showed like shots of the audience, and Steve Wozniak was in the audience. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, and J.J. Abrams was in the audience as well. So that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so the products yeah. they announced. So the first product they announced was. Oh, well, actually, the first thing they announced was the new Apple stores, um, which is actually a, a really cool, cool thing. Actually, they're completely rebooting the entire Apple store line of stuff. Uh, and basically, the new Apple stores will be called Apple Town Squares. What? Yeah, so, what this, this sounds really stupid, but it's actually really cool. So, the, for the larger Apple stores in the world, so I think they're making, like, a, a couple of them. So, this will be, like, a huge, a huge, like town the square basically where people can just come and hang out like they will it will be a coffee shop it will be an apple store it will also be the host of like uh uh lectures and you will be able to go in there and learn about uh like art and you can learn about coding they will have um lectures wow. in in their programming lam language swift and uh, yeah, it's, it seems like a lot of cool stuff, actually. Uh, and you don't have to buy a product. You can just go in, sit down in, in, the, in the kind of coffee area and just work on whatever you're working on. They're even going to have conference rooms where you and friends can go in and work on projects in private. It's, it's really cool, actually. And I'm, I'm really excited about them actually doing this. They're encouraging people to community, communicate and meet up with each other, which is something I really appreciate they're doing. Yeah, that sounds like a really nice concept with a lot of potential. And if it's as, uh, as said, then it would be uh, just a very nice thing they're doing for these communities. Yeah, exactly. It seems like a really cool thing. And apparently in like France, they bought like they have they've acquired they bought this like huge like historical building that they're uh having one of these like town squares inside of. Um but yeah, it's So, yeah. Sounds cool. Yeah, they're doing a lot of cool th cool stuff and uh, also uh talking about like this kind of tangentially related to that like the new version of ios ios 11 uh the new app store is entirely curated it is not like the the main section of the new app store is not uh algorithm based it is entirely so that means it is, it is entirely it's... editorial hmm. which means that when you go into the app store 
you will see apps that are recommended by their editors, which means that you will get good stuff. You will not <laughs> get like uh, <laughs> this will this will basically hinder uh, shitty apps that kids download because their 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 parents just gave them a phone. Uh, they will, this will just prevent all the shitty things from getting to the top. Uh, I guess, like, and uh, so you have basically this editor, this set of editors that will basically look through and they will find these awesome games or apps that are hidden and, like, yeah. they get crowded uh, from, like, all the king games and just fucking Candy Crush and whatever. Uh, and they will find these awesome little things and and throw them up to the top and show you, like, oh, look at this. This is really cool. This sounds really nice, but it's also, uh, I guess this could become corrupt very fast. Yeah, I suppose. So if, if you pay money to have <laughs> your your movie or game come up. That's all. Highest. That's all. I mean, you can, I suppose you can already pay to have a, um, to be featured and stuff like that. But yeah, um, yeah. I think it's really cool that uh to have a storefront that is actually curated and not just based on on uh, algorithms and predictions and stuff like that um and from the screens that i've seen it actually looks like really really cool like underneath there there can be like a game showing up like oh we really like this game because of this and this so it's not just like recommended for you <laughs> You know. Because you watch this other shitty movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's the that's uh this is kind of also based on uh Apple Music, a service that they launched, I think it was two years ago. And they have uh, a lot of different radio shows on Apple Music, which is one of the reasons I had Apple Music for a long time. Uh, even though I prefer Spotify, like Apple Music is actually really cool. And one of my favorite things about it is Beats One. So Beats 1 is their 24-7 radio station. And this is a okay. legitimate internet-based radio station where they have different radio shows from, like, Dr. Dre. They have uh, Major Laser has a show. Skrillex has a show. Elton John has a show. Like, they have, like, real musicians making radio shows on this. And it's 24-7. And they also hired, like um real radio hosts with a lot of years of experience i think they have one radio host in in um the western part of the united states one in the eastern part of the united states and then one in in london in england um so yeah like th th there are 24 7 radio shows where actual people recommend music that they like and they play on the channel and they have radio shows where they talk and they do all this stuff um skrillex show specifically is one of my favorite shows there and sadly now because i just can't afford to have it anymore i i don't have apple music anymore but yeah i really liked uh skrillex show there like he he basically just played a lot of uh the music from his um from his uh, label, and also they just played things that never came out, uh, stuff like that. And also Dr. Dre's show, there was this episode where he basically interviewed Snoop Dogg, and uh, they play like some some short music <sighs> things that he never released. And yeah, like Apple Music is actually a That's really nice. cool service. Um, so yeah, That's especially when they um, like show stuff that they haven't done because radio is like if you can hear things that you wouldn't hear otherwise that's like that's cool yeah. and it's sometimes it's nice to have other people choose for you yeah what you listen to yeah instead of just um uh mindless yeah, on <laughs> mindless uh, algorithm pick things for you yeah exactly or just like because sometimes you can't even like come up with something to listen to yourself yeah so then it's good if somebody's like now we're gonna play Taylor Swift Bad Blood. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, sure, yeah. I'm fine with this. Yeah, it's actually, I, I think it's a really cool thing. I like that they are um, really just going deeper into human interaction rather than, oh, we're just gonna keep working on uh, algorithms and AI and stuff like that to really be better at yeah. predicting what you want. Instead, we just have humans that 
recommend things that they like to you. And I like that a lot. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, and it also just gives yeah. people more jobs and like all of these new Apple Town Squares actually they're opening up this entirely new position they're they're hiring people for. Basically it's like uh in Apple stores they have what they call geniuses, which is basically like the Apple tech experts. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now this new position will be like the Apple creative genius, basically. So they have like this this person that just teaches you about like maybe art and stuff like that, how to do things and maybe like Photoshop or whatever. Yeah. So that's really cool. We should definitely look out for this. Yeah. See uh, how it will develop. Yes. So let's get into the products that they actually announced at the show. <laughs> <laughs> so first they announced the apple watch uh series three um it it's just a faster new version of the apple watch and it has um it, it has lte so you can actually use it independently so for example if you were to go out on a run for instance you don't have to bring your phone you can just bring your watch and if someone calls you or sends you a message you will still get your message message and stuff like that um so that's really cool um and that yeah. and if you couple that with the airpods for instance you can play music in your ears uh from your phone from your uh from your watch and you don't have to bring a phone with you uh so yeah it's which is really handy because having a phone with you when you run yeah especially if you don't have good pockets sucks yeah it can be <laughs> clunky uh when you're trying to be on yeah. the move and stuff like that um so yeah that's the apple watch series 3 uh if you like it get it <laughs> <laughs> so then they announced the new apple tv 4k uh which is just a new version of the apple tv that supports 4k and hdr uh and the coolest announcement that they did during this section was that any movie that you have purchased on itunes in hd will be upgraded to 4K for free. Yeah, that's that's good. So instead of like and I'm just kind of regretting the fact that I've bought Blu-rays up to this point because if I would have bought like if all of my movies on iTunes, they would have all been 4K Blu-rays now, basically. But instead, I have to now if I want to upgrade to 4K and all that, I have to go rebuy all my movies in in uh, Blu-ray 4K, but if hmm, I w yeah. if you buy your movies on iTunes, they will just be automatically upgraded to 4K when that movie uh, it has been remastered in 4K. So that is just an awesome consumer move by Apple, and uh, I think this will show a lot of people actually that maybe you shouldn't go physical when it comes to movies, like. The fact that you will just get, like, for example, imagine in the future when we go to like 8K, for instance, and you bought a bunch <laughs> of 4K movies on iTunes, and Apple comes and like, oh, here's the Apple TV 8K, and also all your iTunes movies will now be in 8K. Yeah, like that's that's awesome. how it's supposed to be. Yeah, and that's awesome. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, with Apple like yeah. taking this step, like this shows that it's not okay for movies for movie uh, studios to sell you a movie again if you own it already yeah it's like for because it isn't that much harder for them to just they've already filmed it so they already have the they already have it in 4k yeah so, i mean yeah exactly and it's really how it's supposed even to if you don't own the movie it will be the same the hd price will be the same as the 4k price so it's just a lot of really cool stuff that apple's doing in that section as well uh, unfortunately, one of the most, uh, one of the biggest draws of the Apple TV 4K is that it doesn't support YouTube in 4K because Google and Apple can't talk to each other very well. So, like Google's uh, format of 4K video is not supported on Apple TV, and blah 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 blah. All this like political garbage. Hopefully, yeah. it will be updated in the future, but we'll see. But but it's kind of isn't it like Google is trying to like create everything for themselves like all the systems to play things and purchase yeah uh products and then apple is kind of trying to do the same thing and windows is trying to do the same thing yeah and the difference and their whole like thing is 
their whole like uh, uh, pr- the Apple like ecosystem. Yeah, the a- Apple ecosystem that they're trying to like make like global or like they're trying to spread it as much as possible yeah. probably. And uh, Windows and Google too, they they don't cooperate with each other because, uh, well, they don't work well with each other because they are like trying they're to compete for the same yeah. space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and the difference between a lot of these is that Google usually makes the best version of everything, and they are very uh, open to collaborating with others. Like for example, like you have a lot, you have Google features on iOS, you have Google features on Windows, you know. Um. But you don't have yeah. iTunes on Android, for instance. You don't have iMessage on Android. You don't have iMessage on PC. All these things. Like the thing, the Apple features that people want are not available on other platforms. While the Google mm. features people want are available on every platform. Yeah. Like, and I think also some of the Windows features, such as Office at least, are available on on uh, android platforms yeah also ios i think um yeah window microsoft is a little bit more selective when it comes to their features or (laughs) more specifically they have all their features on every platform but no one wants to use them (laughs) (laughs) like who wants to use cortana like who wants to use cortana over google assistant or siri and who wants to use um grove yeah, groove like the Google oh. groove over Spotify. Yeah, exactly. Like they they just have, they don't have the it's their their products are just not as good. But yeah, let's move on to the next uh, section of this uh, of this uh, Apple event where they actually get got to the iPhone, which is what everyone was looking for, uh, and. The first announcement that they made was the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. And this is basically just a copy of the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus, and before that, the 6 and the 6 Plus and the 6S and the 6S Plus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, basically the, new, the news in this one is that they have this new A11 Bionic chip, which is, this is the most powerful mobile chip that exists uh like if you if you take uh, we've seen a lot of uh benchmarks between the iphone 8 and the uh samsung galaxy note 8 and the iphone 8 is so massively far ahead it is insane how much faster uh, the iphones are um so yeah and i think it's a six core processor so uh it, mm. there there's a lot of power in there um especially when it comes to like uh multi core stuff but yeah uh they also have wireless charging uh a lot of all- augmented reality features and uh yeah it's a, it's a very solid phone but everyone was a little bit disappointed by it because the real star of the show was the iPhone 10 or as it is in the writing iPhone X um, but yeah iPhone 10 and a lot of people are like oh why isn't it at a numeral 10 come on like they have <laughs> done this for years like Mac OS it was Mac OS 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 was an X like this is not <laughs> something new uh, so yeah this is iPhone 10 and it is a beautiful phone if you ask me I think it's gorgeous um, basically like the entire front of it is a screen except for a little notch where they have a bunch of sensors and cameras and a speaker um, but yeah I think it's a really gorgeous phone and uh, they show a lot of new tech with it like such as Face ID uh, which will re- be replacing Touch ID uh, they said it was better and all that and un- there was this unfortunate uh, mishap happened on stage where uh, one of the phones that the phone that Fred um uh, Craig Federighi, one of the the guys uh, on Apple who usually on stage, like he's a really cool guy. Um, Craig Federighi picked up one of the iPhone 10 phones and was gonna unlock it with Face ID, and it didn't work. But the reason why it didn't work was because this phone had just been restarted, 
And when you restart your phone, you have to enter the PIN. Um, so it was just this really unfortunate thing where it looked like it didn't work, but it was just the phone <laughs> that asked for a PIN because it had just been restarted. Um, yeah. So I picked up the other phone and it worked. So uh, yeah, unfortunate considering they had just talked about how great it is and then it didn't work. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. they've gotten a lot of shit over that, but but yeah. Um, but uh, the coolest thing to me that was shown f with the iPhone X uh, was with the, this new face tracking um, technology that that they have, and they announced the Animoji, which is like a new emoji feature that's taken to a whole new level, and it's really really cool. Uh, have you seen any, anything of this? Yeah, I've seen it. It's kind of like facial motion capturing. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, what's it called? Facial motion tracking. Yeah. Uh, and you put your, like, uh, face onto emojis. And when I say face, I don't mean, like, you put your face. I mean yeah. the, the movements yeah, of your face. Yeah, uh, basically, if, uh, if, uh, if you're familiar with motion capture, uh, like uh, a lot of games, for instance, like Uncharted, they use motion capture to... Uh, capture the 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 uh, actor's performance into their digital character, so it looks like it's a human, you know. And what they've yeah. done here is that they've taken a lot of the popular different emojis, like the fox and the alien and the chicken and panda and the poop. <laughs> <laughs> they've taken a lot of these emojis and they've recreated them. Sorry, they've recreated them in three D. So it's a three D model. And what the face uh, the face tracking technology available in the iPhone 10, it just kind of makes this digital uh, capture of your face. And then when you make different like facial expressions, stuff like that, it gets uh, represented in real time onto <laughs> this uh, emoji. Yeah, the poop emoji yeah. <laughs> that you chose. <laughs> exactly. And it tracks everything. Like it tracks... Uh, your mouth, it tracks your uh, eyebrows, it tracks like if you like, it tracks all these different things. So it really looks like um, it, you can really make any emoji you want. And they said like uh, they made this uh, when like they're the Apple engineers like got this like face ID technology and then they just kind of stumbled and created this basically. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the thing that they said behind it was that when you're looking for an emoji, like there's pages and pages and pages and pages of emojis. And you're like looking between like, huh, nah, this is one not really representing what, how I feel right now and blah, blah, blah. You have to look through a bunch of emojis. Like, oh, okay. This one's kind of okay, so I'll use it. But basically now you can just um, open up the Animoji app within I, iMessage and then you can just do a facial expression and then y y your exact facial expression will be represented in the Animoji. So you can just make yep. any emoji you want. This is really a new step in uh, communicating with uh, over the internet. Because uh, it's like I know uh, a friend of mine that he tried to make... He like was interested in the application of motion tracking, facial motion tracking in like uh, online gaming environments. Yeah. So, so to say, like in let's say you play World of Warcraft or, or some other MMO, and then the character can actually track represent how you are feeling. Yeah. And like your face, facial movements can be translated into the game. Yeah, you could actually in a, in a multiplayer game, you could go up to another character. Uh, uh, to another player and you could talk to that player and your facial expression could basically be represented into in your in-game character so like there's mm. a lot of potential with this technology for the future this is just the beginning really yeah and one of the also cool features that they <coughs> what that they applied to to this as well is you're able to record yourself doing this so Basically, you can just uh, you can bring up one of the emojis. Say you were to bring up the fox, for instance, then you can just say like, 
uh, I could send like a message to you like, hello, Oscar, uh, how are you doing? Blah, 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 doing, okay. How about we go to whatever uh, at 10, okay? And then I can just send that to you <laughs> and you will get a, a video of this fox emoji with my audio talking <laughs> and the <laughs> emoji will be animated the way I, I, my face was animated when I said it. Like, it is this really, really cool thing. <laughs> The future is here. Yeah, the future is here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's basically yeah. that's basically it. Um, I think that's uh, that's it. Anything else you want to add to this uh, Apple event? Not really. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot of interesting things that uh, we have uh, spoken about here, yeah. and uh, it's it really is uh, like uh, promising. Yeah, it's really promising. Well, I think. Uh, yeah. Really good. <clears throat> uh, actually, like, uh, whenever I get a lot of money again, I think I'm actually going to go back into Apple's ecosystem. Um, because I think there are a lot of innovation and cool things that's actually happening in Apple's uh, Apple's products. Like, I'm really interested in the iPhone mm. 10. I'm really interested in the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. I'm really interested in the MacBook Pro. Like, uh, I think they're doing a lot of... Like, they're not making, like mind-blowing new products like Microsoft is doing, <laughs> but I think they're doing all of these tiny, tiny little uh, tweaks and changes to their stuff that just makes it yeah. really cool and just it makes it... It's good for... Like, it's not these... Basically, like, for example, with the Surface Book trailer, for instance, when it's just a laptop, then all of a sudden, like, and, like, the screen just goes away from the keyboard. And it's like, whoa, that was a tablet? Uh, all this stuff. <laughs> like that kind of mind blowing stuff isn't in Apple's products, but Apple makes products that are actually useful. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like they may not be making these amazing new innovations, other Absurd. than emojis, of course. And emojis are fucking cool. Yeah, but yeah, like they're making these tiny, like, tiny little tweaks that just help you in your everyday life. So, yeah, I'm actually really excited about Apple products again. The only problem is they're really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that cash. Yeah. All right, um, so let's get into the topic, which is the Nintendo Direct, right after this break. that happened on September 15th, was it? Maybe this was 13th, I don't remember. It was, uh, <laughs> it was September, please, <laughs> of 2017. <laughs> so yeah, uh, they started off with a lot of information about Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which looks cool. It looks like another Pokemon <laughs> Sun Moon yeah. game. I mean, I'm actually like not really excited about this. Um, but yeah, a few, uh, like a week later or so, they showed a trailer where they show that you can actually surf now, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose it's cool. It's, it's kind of like we've been lacking the, the contents of the new, new, uh, Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon games. It's always looked like, yeah, it's Sun and Moon. You have different clothes, clothes on the, the main character. Yeah. But, uh. I mean, we got now we got some more information that maybe helps. Uh, yeah, I'm. Tell the games apart. Are you excited about this game at all? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, same here. I'm just not really excited about it. May I'll like maybe I'll get one of the versions, but this is not. I'm definitely not gonna get both versions like I did last year. Um. Mm, they they seem to be like 
there isn't anything new that I really want. Yeah, exactly. It's it just feels like they they added some photo shoots system and I don't care about that. Yeah. And they added some new colors. It looks really nice. It's probably better to buy this game, Ultra Sun and Moon, if you're new. Yeah. If you don't if have you haven't, Sun and Moon. If you didn't buy Sun and Moon, just wait for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, basically. <laughs> like this is just it seems like it's just a better game in every way. But for someone who's played the Sun and the Moon <laughs> it's just not something I wanna play again. Yeah, because we have also we have done this before. We have uh, played um, like black and white. And, yeah, and it's it's basically the same thing. Yeah, like my question is, why wasn't this just sun and moon too? <laughs> you know, like it doesn't sound as cool. Like yeah, it, it, it's um, it, like with black and white and black and white too. Like that was actually a new story, but it was set in the same world. I prefer that. Yeah. That sounds... That's, like, cool. This is just, like, the same game, yeah, this is, but a little bit different. They said, like, it's an alternate take on Sun and Moon. And I was like, why? Well, I, I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah. How hard can it be to come up with something more original than that? Yeah. Because it's like... Even if you're Pokemon, like, one of the biggest franchises, we still expect, like, to have some interesting gameplay element if it's just the same every time it's not gonna be yeah. that interesting yeah exactly so yeah i'm kind of disappointed by ultra sun ultra moon so far um they they announced some new ultra beasts i think it was ub burst and ub assembly uh and they yeah, yeah they looked <laughs> they looked all right looked as just as weird <laughs> as all the other ultra beasts do <laughs> Which isn't really a compliment or a, or it's not good or bad. Yeah, it's, it's just they look weird. They look weird, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then they went into just random 3DS news, which is yeah they announced uh, um, the new Layton game, Yokai Watch Two, Psychic Specters, um, Fire Emblem Warriors, yeah. Yeah, 3DS isn't really also, exciting right now. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm still happy that they actually are pushing the system, that they aren't abandoning it, I guess. Yeah, uh, I think the reason they're still supporting 3DS is because they were real. They really didn't know if the Switch was going to be successful, so they still kept the 3DS around in case it was going to be a failure. But now they realized, oh, the Switch is a massive success. So I think now they're just kind of slowly trickling the 3DS out. Yeah. Because I think, uh, like, any projects that they started on 3DS when the Switch was uh, released, uh, like, those are, like, maybe a year or two year projects. So I think we're going to see 3DS support, like, very sparse, but still support for the 3DS. Until mm -hmm. probably like the end of 2019 or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, from probably from uh, let's see, like April of 2017, which was like a month after um, the Switch came out. From that point, I don't think a single 3DS project has come into development. Okay. So basically, it's it's. I th that's it's my going speculation, at least. Like, I don't think yeah. they've started a single 3DS game since like April or something. So they also, I think, this is one of the the things I actually remember from the stream, the Nintendo Direct, is that they announced the Mario Party, con consisting of the like one yeah 100 shows Mario Party the top Mario 100. Party games. Uh, it's a new compilation game coming to the 3DS, which will include the top 100 best mini games from the um, from the Mario Party series. Yeah, and I'm like, why the fuck isn't this on Switch? <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. Like, yeah, why this should. Be on Switch. They've... Does Switch have a Mario Party? Oh, no. like this is the <laughs> third Mario Party game they're making for 3DS. Then they've made one Mario Party for the DS, 
and one Mario Party for Game Boy Advance. I don't even know why they made Mario Party for a portable platform to begin with. <laughs> it's supposed to be played in a living room in front of a television. Yeah, it's stupid. It really is just fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like they could have released this for the Switch. And uh, it would be really awesome because the Switch is really compatible. Yeah, and the thing is, this is something the Mario Party fan base has asked for for a long time. Just getting, just mm. to get the best Mario Party games uh, <laughs> in one game. So, do you think the reason why they didn't like put this on the Switch is because they actually have a Mario Party? Like, is it twelve or was it? Is it now? Um, like in development. Pro probably like uh, I'm sure Mario Party. I think it's Mario Party. It's Mario Party Eleven. It's the next Mar numbered Mario Party. I'm sure there is mm. one in development for Switch, and I hope it's reinventing the series. And I really hope they're not using the fucking car again. Yeah, like it is just Fuck the car. Yeah, like Mario Party Nine, which was not really talked about at all by anyone, and Mario Party Ten. Like, Mario Party 10 looks like the most boring fucking Mario Party game I've ever seen. Yeah, I remember when it came out and we were like... We looked at the trailers and, and gameplay footage and we were like, What the fuck is this? Yeah, like, what the fuck is this? Why are we all in a fucking car? Everybody wins! Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just this... I, I feel like Mario Party is this uh, last stretch of Nintendo's, like everyone can play face you know that they did during yeah. the wii u uh and the end of the wii where like oh you you're not you're not you're not used to games well you can play too you know and you can see like with the switch now like if you look at the difference between uh skyward sword and breath of the wild skyward sword is yeah. just like just go keep going it's so friendly for you, you can you just swing your sword and breath of the wild is like oh you played for 10 seconds, you just died, and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's really what gamers like. We can see what yeah. uh, what has been praised and what has not... Well, Skyward Sword is pretty... It was pretty praised too, I think. It was this story okay, was good, but praised. like... It, it was best, but definitely this moment where like every reviewer was like, Oh, this is revolutionary, this is so good, it's so good. And then when people actually started looking at it, I was like... Oh, stop! Third, so many tutorials. Yeah, like this, <laughs> there are so many tutorials. Twenty hours of this game is just you pointing a sword in a direction and following it. Like it's literally <laughs> following, <laughs> um, yeah, a, an objective marker. Like it's just why are why are we doing this? It's not fun. This is not gameplay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're just following a straight a straight road, which is just like why why are we doing this? It's not fun but yeah um and now mario party the third game of three yeah. yes great so that's that's your reaction yeah then i guess we move on <laughs> yeah so let's move on to the switch section of the direct which was um they talked uh they introduced it with a way too long um section of xenoblade chronicles 2 stuff like, it just kept going and going and going and going and going. And then you <laughs> just felt like, all right, we're finally going to move on. It's like, nope. <laughs> now we're going to have this, like, massive gameplay overview. <laughs> 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 With this really just kind of boring voiceover of one of the characters in the game, which is like a grandpa character. So it was just in nobody cares yeah. about grandpa. Yeah, it was just inherently grandpa boring characters. to listen to. So. <laughs> but yeah, um, and it, it's kind of sad as well because Soundwave Chronicles already has a very low amount of people that are interested in the game, and this did not help. It's it helped the game at all. I think. Yeah, I don't know. They have been really pushing this Xenoblade uh, Chronicles too. Yeah. Since the, I think since the Wii U era. Yeah, uh, the first Xenoblade uh, game came out on Wii, and then they released a remake mm -hmm. on new 3DS, and then they released the Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U, and now they're releasing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on Switch. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and this has become kind of like one of the main stables of Nintendo's franchises, which is interesting since it's not a first party game. So, yeah, you can really see like a big yeah. change in Nintendo here, actually, that they're actually like so majorly supporting a, a second party game. But you, uh, you think that the <coughs> really long trailer isn't going to help the game? Yeah, especially when it's so anime. Uh, like, the, the anime aesthetic is something that is a very... Like, a lot of people in the West just do not like it, and I'm one of them. Like, I am just like... Yeah. I, I kind of cringe when anime gets too anime. Like, there is uh, such a thing as too anime. <laughs> um, <laughs> too anime. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just got get it just point. got really anime and it really just nerdy um fantasy. Yeah. And at the same time, like you're having these like really serious scenes, and then you have this girl who's barely dressed at all, and it's like, why is this happening? What am I watching right now? Like, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people were like, I would end this this direct right now if I didn't know Super Mario Odyssey was gonna show up later. <laughs> I sure I'm sure a lot of people thought that um, because it was just yeah. a really boring sex segment. I, I get what you uh, what you're saying because it's I think I have been a fan of anime uh, uh, like at least when I was younger I was a big fan, mm -hmm. but it's kind of this thing either you are one of the people who like it or you hate it kind of. Yeah. I mean, I I remember trying to like show anime to my parents and people and it was like. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's not for everyone. Yeah. So I understand when they put like a long anime-ish trailer inside the direct can be kind of off-putting. Um, and anime really have some... <laughs> I mean, they have some traps that they fall into. And I mean like... Yeah, anime is When really making mean, anime, it's like... There's a lot of tropes in anime. Tropes, yeah. It's like, we're saving the world! Yeah. We have really high-pitched voices. Yeah. We have the love interest. Exactly. And it's like, uh, yeah, and everybody's 14. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Yeah. Like, the only anime that I watch is the Pokemon anime. I think, like, the really anime, like, the anime anime works in Pokemon because it's a kid's show. Like, I go into it. Like, this is a kid's show. Like, it's supposed to be silly and stupid. But uh, mm -hmm. they still have a lot of really emotional moments in that show, and that's why I really like it. Um, but yeah, like um, there is this mix of just moments that are too anime, and there are moments that actually are really good. And I hope I wish they focused on those moments a little bit more. <laughs> but yeah, it, it it just works in Pokemon, I think, because it's Pokemon is inherently like more playful in its feel, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, there's also things such as good anime and bad anime, and when they like fall into making the the tropes that are overused and like yeah off putting, it's just bad. Yeah, exactly. I haven't watched a lot of anime, and I've heard that there are like really good animes like Death Note and the Attack on Titan and stuff like that, and I haven't watched those, so yeah, I can't really speak authoritarily on on uh, anime in general, but but yeah, um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, let's move on from this boring segment. <laughs> uh, yeah, so next up they went into a lot of different just Switch headlines. And this is where they just announced uh, games like Kirby Star Allies, which is the new Kirby game coming out. They announced the, uh, the update for Splatoon 2, which is uh, a couple of maps and a new weapon. Um, they also showed the new update to to arms, which has actually really gotten me back into arms. I actually really like arms. I uh, the new fighter Lola Pop is just a, an mm -hmm. amazingly delightful fighter. Uh, she, like she's a clown and she just she can turn into a ball and bounce. It's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then the new update also allows you to remap the controls, which is a huge thing because the controls on every version of of arms are just bad they're just apart from like the the motion controls are okay so but every other like mapping of the controls are just horrible so the fact that i'm actually been able to change them it's something that i like has gotten me a lot has gotten me in, back into the game again and i really like it a lot like i really actually like arms a lot i just think it's a very 
lackluster game when it comes to content, especially single player content. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Loa Pop, awesome character. Twintel is still uh, babe. Anyway. <laughs> 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 then they also announced that Snipper Clips um, is getting a new version. So it's Snipper Clips Plus. And this is like an expanded version of the original game featuring 30 new state, more than 30 new stages. And um, if you already own the game, you can just buy DLC for 10 bucks instead of having bu- to buy the full $30 game again. So that's oh, really that's good. Nice. Uh, and the Snipper Clips is, was originally 20, so it adds up perfectly. It's a really great <laughs> deal. Um, yeah, also NBA 2K18, FIFA 18, WWE 2K18. Uh, some fucking MOBA bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about Fire Emblem Warriors? No, the mob. <laughs> no, they show Arena of Valor, which is some MOBA game coming to okay. Switch. <clears throat> but yeah, um, then they also showed. Uh, they also went deeply into. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, Octopath Traveler, um, which is. I played the demo. It's a free demo on Switch. It's actually a pretty cool game. So it's this um it's this um Japanese RPG um which uh really looks a lot like Final Fantasy VI, uh but it's set in this three-dimensional world and the graphics are really beautiful. It's in Unreal Engine 4. Um and I played it a little bit. It looks gorgeous. I think I showed it a little bit to you. Um, maybe. Uh, yeah, it was this uh, game where there is a three-dimensional world and sixteen-bit uh, sprites in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a cool game, and like, uh, the the demo is they also yeah they released a demo for it, and it's a really expansive demo. Um, like, there are two campaigns in the demo, like uh, two short pieces of campaigns. Uh, you get to play as one character. I don't remember his name. I didn't play his car- his campaign. Then I played a little bit of Primrose's campaign, and this is a really like they're they're not censoring themselves in this like uh, version of the game here. Like uh, with um, Primrose's campaign, Primrose is basically a stripper. Oh, okay. And he <laughs> she is content. yeah she's nice. basically owned by. A, uh, like a guy who they have to call a master and it's just really weird and he's like really abusive and uh, like there's a lot of obviously they don't really show much but like the 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 dialogue like really um, show really like hints towards the fact that they've probably been raped and uh, abused and stuff like that so it's, it's just like really dark stuff um, mm. and um, uh, it's also like the major like cutscenes quote unquote cutscenes are fully voice acted as well which is like you don't really think uh, a 16 bit style game is gonna be voice acted but it's really cool the voice acting is pretty good and all that stuff so uh, yeah it's actually yeah, a the, really impressive the... game looks really cool also it's like a an old 16-bit game that's in 3d yeah exactly and with the beautiful lighting that unreal engine produces yeah so yeah i think the best way is probably to check it out to understand how it's yeah how it's visual uh, yeah the appearance. yeah the demo is fully free on the switch eShop. so just uh go into the coming soon section of the eShop, scroll down to project octopath traveler and download the demo. It's I recommend it. It's cool. Um, the combat is pretty cool as well. So yeah, uh, I recommend it. Yeah. Um, and uh, then so they showed Mario. some more news and blah blah blah. I think I just kind of merged everything together before. Uh, let's see. Where was there anything else up here? Yeah, they showed uh, they're releasing arcade games on Switch for the first time. Uh, they're for the first time re-releasing arcade games in their original form. 
Um, so you'll like for the first time you're actually gonna be able to play the uh, arcade version of Punch Out, for instance. Um, That's cool. Yeah, like Punch Out has never been re released before, and that was a a vertical cabinet as well. So you would be able to take your Switch and prop it out vertically, basically, and play Punch Out on it. Uh, hmm. So yeah, and that's where the wireframe Mac comes from as well. Um, and that's the skin in Smash Bros. Um, yeah, exactly. The green, uh, green wireframe. Yeah, exactly. Skin. The that's from that's where it comes from. The arcade version. Um, okay, so let's see. Was there anything else before we go into Mario? Yeah, we all know what we want to go into. <laughs> yeah, obviously also they, uh, they announced Doom and Wolfenstein, as we talked about earlier, for Switch. Doom actually looks pretty good. It's obviously like a lot lower in resolution, and sadly, it's 30 frames per second. Um, but it's still impressive how they've been able to get like a um, a triple A, a fully triple A a uh, modern console title onto the Switch. Like, it's really impressive how they've been able to do that. Yeah. Um, and Digital Foundry even made a video where they tried to... They made a PC with similarly specced uh, parts for to the Switch, and they tried to basically see if... And they were not able to get even a stable 30 frames per second on, on the PC version of Doom, so... Um, yeah, it's really understandable how, why it's actually cut to 30 frames instead of 60. Yeah, it's still impressive. Yeah, exactly. They actually made it work to begin with, so. Yeah, um, we'll see what happens with, uh, Wolfenstein later on. That is a 30 FPS game on consoles already, so <laughs> we'll see <laughs> what happens there. But yeah, uh, with all that done... Let's end the show. No, yeah, let's kidding. head into. <laughs> it, it, let's what? end the show. No, <laughs> no it's yeah, let's, time. Let's not talk about Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for, which is Super Fucking Mario Odyssey. Holy shit! This game keeps <laughs> surprising me every time. I don't understand how they keep yeah. doing it. This is gonna be the best game this year. Yeah, like I. I am so excited, and I, I've said multiple times, like, this is the first real sequel to Super Mario 64. Don't give me any, like, Sunshine garbage. Sunshine was not a good sequel to 64. There were just, like, six stages in the game. It was, um, all the stages were, like, really linear and all that stuff. Like, it was not as free form as 64 was. Like, for example, if you were to get a shine in a stage in in Sunshine, you had to yeah. start with that episode. You couldn't just find run into another oh, yeah. shine. Like you can in, in, in 64, where you can just run into another star while you try to find a th- uh, one star. Um, I mean, I, it's, this game is going to be amazing, yeah. really. And I, I know what you mean. It really does remind uh, us of Super Mario 64, Especially in that way that you actually are traveling like a world and collecting there's like a ton of moons that you can collect and yeah. they are already placed there so you, you don't have to like go into one map with one objective. It's like Yeah, like and as we saw in, in the overview that they had in, in the in the trailer, like there could be up to like sixty moons in one level. <laughs> Like, what the That's fuck? Insane. Like, there are so many moons in each level of the game. Yeah. And if it's the same structure as the earlier games, like, there will be, like, the same amount of moons in every world. Obviously, we don't know if that's going to be the case with Odyssey. But, like, if every game, every if every world has what it seems like 69 stars, if 69 moons... Holy shit! Like there's, I think uh, I think it was Nintendo Life. Like they decided to count it to stop it at fifty or sixty moons. I sixty moons, I think it was. And basically, for all the worlds that we know exist, there will be over six hundred moons in this game. That's insane. That's in yeah, it's crazy. So, uh, yeah, 
I think this is gonna be the, probably the best game of the year. Yeah, I I think so as well. And as I was gonna say earlier, like this is literally a game I've waited for my entire life. Super Mario 64 is one of my favorite games of all time. And as much as people want to say that other Mario games are better, I don't think any Mario game has been able to capture the freedom that you have in 64. Uh, obviously, like, Galaxy um, eclipsed 64 massively when it comes to actual, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and the level design and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But still, like, the sense of exploration that you have in 64 hasn't been eclipsed by another Mario game yet. Um... So that's why, like, that's why I'm really excited about this game because I've literally waited my entire life for it. Like, the last game, uh, the last sequel, like, this is the first sequel to this game that's come out in 21 years. And guess how old I am? I am 21. I'm turning 22. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've waited my entire life for this game. So, yeah, uh, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> if you didn't notice. Yeah. But yeah, let's get into some of the cool things that they showed. So obviously they showed a lot of new worlds. Uh, they showed this uh, like seaside tropical, like the seaside world where apparently the water is sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> that's really something, yeah, that's I guess. Funny. <laughs> and then they also showed the ice world, which was called the Shiveria, I think. And that looked yeah, gorgeous. So like, like this heavy snow storm just going on and like... It looked weirdly realistic also, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it will be interesting to see what will they'll do with ice mechanics and such. Yeah. They also detail a lot of the kingdoms in, in the game. So there is the Cap Kingdom, the... Um, what was it called? The City Kingdom? I don't remember what that was called. And then yeah. you got the Sand Kingdom, awesome. the Wooden Kingdom... The uh, I don't have it up listed up right here, but um, and then what also, yeah, the food kingdom, yeah, the food kingdom, right? Um, there's also the snow kingdom, the seaside kingdom. Uh, yeah, I think that's all the ones they showed in the trailer, and then it was also this <laughs> the one where they were like, we're not gonna spoil all of them, but here's another one. <laughs> it's like, but <laughs> okay, and I don't. During that section, they said like he, he said that um, Mario will visit uh, a lot of new places, including tropical islands, which yeah. got me thinking: What if Sunshine is in this game? What if Dude. Isle Delfino is in this game? And later, a, like about a week later, like or like just a couple of days ago. Uh, another image was released on Jap on uh, Nintendo's Japanese Twitter or something like that with an, a full part of the map, and we can see Isle Delfino on the map. That's cool. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's, that's like unlocking the counter region all over again. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see if I can... Oh, but it's a nice, it's a nice uh, homage to the... to Sunshine, I guess. Dude, I also noticed something, uh, and that is that in one level uh, in the trailer, Mario jumps into a painting that looks like uh, DK City or New Donk City, I mean. Um, so that's interesting too, I suppose. What, uh, uh, sorry, can you say that again? There is uh, one level or in the, the sand level in the, the trailer. Oh yeah, the painting. Yeah, there's a painting. He jumps into a painting that looks like New Donk City. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I sent you a, a, an image. If you look at mm -hmm. the bottom uh, left of the image between the Mushroom Kingdom on the map, mm -hmm. you see there's the Isle Delfino. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it seems like they're... Uh, it's true. And also... Uh, yeah, uh, they seem to have brought back the brought back the paintings in in the new game where there is yeah there seems to be like paintings scattered out throughout the worlds that will just teleport you to to other worlds basically, and what I think uh, that will be is basically maybe there is some kind of locked like there is some part of um, of New Donk City that you can't get to right and. Uh, Maybe you have to get to that through a painting in another world, basically, or something like that. Mm, um, yeah. But uh, the more interesting th part about these uh, paintings 
is that in, I think it was Giant Bomb's uh, gameplay, uh, it was some outlets gameplay, they run across, in the Food Kingdom, they run across a painting with Peach's castle on it. That's so cool. So, I really hope that is what I think it is. So the question is, will you be able to run around the um the the uh the courtyard of Peach's Castle from Super Mario 64 <laughs> in Odyssey. Yes. Let's uh, yes, yes. Of and course. the next question is how much of Super Mario 64 is in this game? Like can you enter the castle? Mm. Can you actually enter any of the worlds? Like, can you how... play the bomb field? Yeah, like I hope, uh, like they did recreate one uh, a Super Mario sixty four level back in Galaxy two. So I'm wondering, like, will there be any remade sixty four levels or Sunshine levels as, as well? Since Isle of Fino is on the map, like, will there be any like remade levels in this game? And the question is, how much of that will uh, will there be? Because Obviously, like the worlds in uh, in Odyssey seem to be way bigger than anything we saw in in uh, sixty four and and Sunshine. So just remaking those places probably not a lot of work. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see. Like how much of these past games will be able to will we be able to um to explore? Yeah. So yeah, that's gonna be really interesting. And also, they showed the new photo mode that's also in, in Odyssey, which I'm really excited about. Like, you can just run around uh, one of these worlds and then you're like, oh, I, I think this is really cool and I can just do... Or maybe there's like some cool sight, some cool thing that you're seeing in your world, like, oh, I just want to take a picture of this. And uh, they also show that you can just uh, flip it vertically and you can just take a picture for your phone or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, and the quality is really good. Yeah. I mean, you could also put like some uh, some blurs around, motion blurs and yeah, there are like, a lot around the edges. Yeah, and there stuff. are a lot of different filters and uh, different effects that you can use. You can zoom and all of this different stuff. Like yeah. it's a really, really um, expansive photo mode, which I'm really excited. Mario about. has become like this social. Uh, Social website hero. <laughs> He's becoming learning how to take Instagram pictures. But it's it's like a, a I mean it's a really clever now. thing to do as well because if you're encouraging your players to take screenshots and share them, people are yeah. gonna do that, and that's free marketing for you. <laughs> Especially since that's like smart Facebook and Twitter integration, like it's deeply integrated into the Switch software. So just uh, taking a screen, taking a beautiful screenshot and sharing it on your Twitter is super easy. <laughs> so yeah, like um, you're doing uh, it really well. Smart move, smart move, Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else did they show in the trailer? Yeah, they show the world map for the first time. Um, it's actually yeah, it's a map and it's actually the globe. And once again, like if if you kind of follow this game deeply, you can see that the moon is very very prominently shown in the entire game. Uh, and once again on the map, yeah. the moon is prominently shown on on in like the world map screen. Do you think there is a reason for this? I think the final world will be on the moon. Yeah, that sounds. I think it was. Reasonable. Let's see. I think it was. Yeah, it was Game Explain because Game Explain makes like analysis movies now when it comes to Zelda and Mario. <laughs> but yeah, I think I, two hour. Yeah, uh, I don't know if two hour movies. I don't think I don't know if um, Nintendo has specifically said this or if it was in Game Explain's analysis, but it seems like the rabbits, like not the rabbits, but the new rabbits <laughs> from Raymond rabbits with a T. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that are yeah. helping with um, Bowser's wedding in Odyssey. They are apparently com they com apparently come from the moon. Uh, are they are they the same rabbits as in Mario sixty four? <laughs> maybe maybe in they're the like Galaxy. coming back uh, to revenge Mario because Mario just threw 
through the Mario, why you steal my around. star? <laughs> yeah. Why you steal the star? <laughs> you stole our star and it's time for us to revenge you. <laughs> now we steal your girl. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then also something interesting that Game Explain came out and said uh, recently was that uh, the way Bowser talks in this game. So he doesn't have full voice acting like he did in Sunshine. Uh, he <laughs> talks a lot like he did in Galaxy, where it's basically like... <laughs> but the cool thing... Lovely voice he has. The, the cool thing is that he actually, if you listen closely, he actually specifically says names. So, for okay. example, so it's basically like Bowser is speaking another language, but since names are not do not change between languages, he still says the so, name. So you mean like this is the same as in Star Fox Adventures when they're like, "Waku waku waku, Crystal Palace." <laughs> waku waku waku. It's like Star Fox. Uh, <laughs> like from from what Andre from Crystal. Game Explained said, it's it's more like Mama ma, Mario, Mama ma, 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 Peach, Mama. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like it's more yeah. like if you listen closely, you're here that he said that he says it. It's not the crystal clear like Chrysoa Palace. Yeah. <laughs> like when, when Japanese people talk like Nintendo 3 ds what's about Yeah. I really love listening to Japanese people. Like even like like even when there are like uh, subtitles or someone talking over or something like that. I still love just listening to what to say because I love it when they go from saying something in Japanese to saying something in English, to say something in Japanese again. <laughs> I just think it sounds so, so, so cool. But yeah, is there anything else about Odyssey to talk about? I think I think we've uh, spoken quite a lot about it. I think we've covered most of the things. There's probably a lot more to cover, but I mean, there are videos for like analyzing every detail out there. So yeah. So what are your? So let's just go into general thoughts about Odyssey. I think it's really colorful and I'm interested to see how these world works and what's up with the paintings and the moon. Yeah. But I mean it's like I, I really think it's artistically pleasing. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, first game. of all and it seems like like it has like a lot of like with the big worlds and the amount of moons it just seems like the gameplay could be really really like it could be a lot of gameplay in this game. Yeah, I'm just waiting to be able to just control the Mario and just feel how he feels in this game. Like whenever I see the see gameplay of this, I just wanna I just wanna play it. I just wanna <laughs> feel like it doesn't <laughs> feel <laughs> does it feel better than Galaxy, you know, like sixty four was yeah. one step. I think Sunshine was a step back. I think Sunshine was too twitchy, uh, with Mario's movements. And then 64, and uh, you no know, Galaxy went back to a more controllable <laughs> version of Mario. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was like to this day, Super Mario Galaxy is the most refined version of Mario we've had today. And this is really exciting because now, 10 years after Galaxy, we're actually going to get a refinement upon the refinement. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's going to be great. Yeah, like I'm really excited we, to do. We can already. I'm really tell. excited to do new roll move. So obviously that's like a an update on the roll move in like 3D land and 3D world. But like this mm. time it's more like physics based, and you can actually like roll for an extended period of time. And if you roll down a hill, you'll gain speed and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, that's really cool. I I, I noticed uh, the gameplay footage in uh, where Mario is like Ghost Mario or something, and he's like just bouncing all over the place, and it seems like it's it's really physics based. Yeah. So it's all right. Cool. So I think that's... see, it's also cool to see what Nintendo has learned from probably like Breath of the Wild and such. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> but yeah, I think that's it when it comes to Super Mario Odyssey. So if you were to set like a general score on this Nintendo Direct in general, how do you think it stacks up to other uh, Directs? I think this one was really big. You think? Yeah, I mean, it was really good. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you had a very slow start with... Um, uh, some of the 3DS stuff wasn't really that exciting, and the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 stuff was pretty boring. 
But when it actually got past that, it got really exciting. And just every news story just was like, like I, I feel like every news story after Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a point where someone was really excited. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Definitely. So yeah, it was a so good I, direct. I'd say this was a good direct. Yeah, I'd really give good. it a um, an A minus. <laughs> yeah. I'd give it a, a 6.8 out of 10, too much water. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's probably a, a minus sounds about right. Yeah. So yeah, Super Mario Odyssey looks like an awesome game. So let's get, uh, let's continue over to the pitch. See you after this. Alright, so we're back. We're gonna talk about our pitch for this show, which is, uh, you know, with the Nintendo Direct recently showing up with our, like, on our new Switch announcements, we want to talk about the biggest Switch announcement, which is bound to happen very soon, and that is <laughs> Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo Switch. Super Smash Bros. Uh, not Melee, and not Brawl, and not, like, I don't know, Switch. Yeah. So first of all, uh, let's uh, because when when we talk about a Smash Bros for the Switch, there are two ways to take this discussion, and these two ways are: one, will it be an entirely new game, or two, will it be a port of the Wii U and 3DS versions? So what do you think? And what we think is more likely is probably the port. Yeah, I agree with that. That it will be a port. So. Obviously, like now, there's been a lot of time. Like when we get when we get to 2018, there have been four years since Smash Bros. Since, Wii U yeah. because that came out in 2014. Um. Yeah. So there's actually been a long time I mean, since then. How how far apart? I'm gonna go and check out how far apart like the other Smash games were. Brawl came out in I think it was 2008. Yeah, so 2008 Around that time to 2013. Times. Yeah, so I think it was the first Smash Bros. came out in 99, right? Um, yeah. And Melee came out in 2001. Brawl came out in around 2007, 2008, somewhere around there. Yeah. And then uh, Wii U and 3DS came out in 2014. So it's not entirely unrealistic that they've made a new Smash Bros. game since then. But I really don't yeah. think so because of some of the more like the politics around the game. Because Sakurai has said more defined this time that he doesn't want to release, he doesn't want to make another Smash game. And yeah, I know that he said that on pretty much every game <laughs> since Melee. But I really think he means it this time that he does not want to make another Smash Bros. game. Yeah, and this is kind of a dilemma because I think Nintendo probably wants to keep one of their biggest franchise and like series alive. Yeah, because Super Smash is like a real cash cow. I, yeah, that's I that's a presume. Yeah, that's a console seller, really. Yeah, uh, and unfortunately, so in, in the uh, <laughs> when it came to the Wii U, it was a 3DS console seller, not a Wii U console seller. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Smash Bros. is one of those games that, like, pretty much every owner of the Switch will buy. Yeah, so, yeah. probably. So, they have to release it some someday. And then the question is if they will release it as a port of the Super... of the Wii U, of the Wii U variant, or if it will be an entirely new thing and that maybe Sakurai isn't working on it. Maybe they just let somebody else do it entirely yeah. maybe some so i think um some swedish guy <laughs> some, 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 sweet... <laughs> some, some guy with the last name swing maybe <laughs> yeah they're like we're giving you all the power <laughs> which characters do you want and i'm like i want rayman and Clo Clonoa and <laughs> and sonic uh mecha sonic <laughs> you got it all right so <laughs> Let's get into what we want to see in this ported version of Smash Bros. Because I don't really think there's any value to actually talking about a new version of Smash Bros. 
Uh, but yeah, let's get into what do we want to see in this ported version of Smash Bros. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be really nice to have a lot of the old like stages from Melee and from uh, Super Smash 64 um, to begin with. I think let's let's start with what is what is like almost hundred percent certain is gonna show up in this game, and then we'll go into more of like what we want actually. So what what do you think is actually like like almost certain to happen? I think we're gonna get the entire uh, game with with all DLC and additional characters. Yeah, I yeah I agree with that. I think we're gonna see the entire Wii U version, and I think we're also gonna get the 3DS content remastered in HD and placed into the mm. Switch version as well. Um, and then like yeah, all the yeah all the DLC, all the DLC characters, all the DLC cost me costumes, all the DLC stages. Um, <clears throat> I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna see the return of ice climbers, as they said. Um, Sakurai went on and said that they com they were complete they completely finished ice climbers, and then they just couldn't make it run stably uh, stable on the 3DS version, which a lot of people says is bullshit, but I totally believe it. Like <laughs> the fact, like Smash Bros is a game that is super steady, 60 frames per second, and like yeah. I believe, like even if ice climbers made the frame rate go. To 59 like it mm -hmm. is a instant cut like it is not showing up in the game yeah you know? so even if it would it was just like a tiny tiny frame rate drop some times when you used uh ice climbers Eight. like if if you used ice climbers on like um the the eight uh versus that's like... that wasn't available on the 3ds version it was only way you okay but like for example yeah. let's say there are like uh, four items on, like maybe there are like eight items on screen. There are four characters, and everyone's using uh, moves ice with a climbers. lot of yeah, with a lot of like alpha effects and all that. And then Ice Climbers is there with two character models, and yeah. it, the frame rate dips just one frame every other like minute or something like <laughs> that. Like that is a big deal to someone like Sakurai, and that is enough to get that character entirely cut from the game. So yeah. I I believe since they were fully finished with um with uh, ice climbers according to what they said, um I think we're gonna see ice climbers come back into this game, and I think we're also gonna see a lot of other like old clones come back like Wolf. Please, please, dear God, please. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think we're gonna see ice climbers, Wolf. I think it's a pretty much certain thing that we're gonna see. Um. Uh. This. Uh, uh, an inkling from Splatoon. Yeah, um, it's one of Nintendo's uh, like biggest franchises now. Yeah, like exactly. So. It's one of their major franchises. It is. I would really think it's weird if they do not incre include uh, an inkling. Uh, I think it would be really interesting to see what they would do with inkling. Like what? Uh, how? What happens with like the ink? Would you be able to shoot ink all <laughs> over the stage and swim through it and all that? Like. What happens when other characters try to walk in the ink? Yeah, that would be really interesting. Yeah, I think it would be really A lot of potential. Thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think it's also very certain that we're going to see an ARMS character show, show up in the game. I don't know which one. But I also think an ARMS, ARMS character is actually really interesting in Smash as well. Because there are no long-range physical characters, right? Yeah. Um... So the fact that you 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 would be able to bring in an arms character and just punch and it reaches like almost <laughs> all across the stage like that would be a really cool character. Yeah, those smash attacks would really like bring some new variety to the game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. think uh, that would be a really interesting character. Um, let's see. Are there any uh, any other characters you think are gonna show up in the game? Like. Uh, Let's not go into like speculation yet, but like, what do you mm. think? What do you think is actually like a pretty certain character to show up? I'm not sure. Maybe uh, no. That I I was thinking for a short moment that maybe like uh, some kind of version of uh, Mario uh, from the Super Mario Odyssey, but yeah. I think 
we mentioned the most likely two characters being being an, an arms character and uh, a, sp- a Splatoon character. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I actually don't think there's a lot of other possible characters. Um, yeah. I, Paper clips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two Snipper Clips characters. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I... Um, maybe like... Um, another Fire Emblem character. <laughs> because we don't yeah. have enough of those already. It's the easiest kind of characters to implement because you can choose choose anyone basically. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the characters we would like to see. Um, get into the game. So first of yeah. all, I want to see Waluigi actually show up in Smash for this this time and not just be an assist trophy. Yeah, I want to see Waluigi playable. <laughs> Give me Waluigi. Everyone loves Waluigi. So just as give an him assist the trophy. No, fuck this the, the assist as, trophy. As as uh, <laughs> as Wario's final smash. No, he's gonna be. He <laughs> should be a fully playable character. Yeah. All right. So uh, give me a character that you want to see in Smash Bros. Oh, and don't I give mean... me like Goku or something. Like give me something that's like actually possible. Yeah, I I can't really think of something. Uh, the the thing I'm thinking about is not really possible, and it's like Rayman. I think and Rayman think... is possible, especially with the new like uh, with Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle being a thing, and there's there is this like very tight relationship between Ubisoft and Nintendo again. I think it's actually very yeah. very possible that Rayman could show up in the game. That would be really great. I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would love to see that. It's one of my favorite characters, so it would be really nice. Yeah, like, and he would also, I think he would also be a very interesting character when it comes to moveset as well. Like, for example, uh, um, like maybe normal yeah, he'd be punches. similar to the arms character. Yeah, like normal punches would just be normal punches, but maybe a smash attack is something that just reaches la- like a little further, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really cool. So. Yeah. So, any other characters? Do you, do you have any other characters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Hmm. Princess I Peach, would, uh, but as dark Princess Peach. <laughs> I would like to see. Um. What's the name? Fuck! I forgot it right now. Um. Come on. Um. I just had it. It was something. What series? Uh, what game series? Um, I think it was Mario. No, maybe not. Fuck, I just... I had it, like, a minute. I had it a second ago. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Damn. Oh, man. Um, Where did it go? Fuck, okay, just... Uh, I'll, maybe I'll remember it soon. Just, okay, move on. What's some character you would like to see? Yeah, um... I mean, I could see that they would probably maybe implement another Pokemon character, but they already have so many. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, like, what series they should implement a character from. But I, uh, my memory is not really doing me any favors right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, and, yeah. I'm thinking uh, of uh, Metroid also, because they recently re- released uh, Samus Returns. Yeah. Uh yeah. God damn it! I had this is it. kind of the thing. I had it like it was. Uh, I <laughs> I was just gonna say it, and then I just kind of distracted myself. All right, whatever. Uh, something I would like to see come back in in, in a come into Smash Bros. is alternate costumes. Obviously, we saw a lot of alternate costumes in Smash Four to begin with, with like for example, like the Koopa Links when it comes to Bre- Bowser Junior. Uh, Alf on on Olimar, um, and then pretty much every all the DLC characters, uh, or like a lot of the like the latest DLC characters had alternate costumes like Corin, uh, Cloud, and Bayonetta. Yeah. Um. So I would like to see a lot of uh, alternate costumes. Um, for example, I want to see uh, Daisy playable as Peach. Um, Definitely. Yeah, and not just a dumb color swap. Like, give me actual Daisy. Um, yeah. I would also like to see. 
Let's see what are some other characters in the game. Uh, I definitely want Miyamoto as a playable character <laughs> with the with the Nintendo Wii sword and the the Zelda shield that he had on the stage. <laughs> Be a terrifying character, <laughs> terrifyingly strong. That's he could uh, he could have the the Mario plus Rabbids gun that he holds up in the Ubisoft conference where he announced Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Yeah. <laughs> That also, that can be his final smash. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh yeah, here we go, I got it. Shovel Knight. Oh yeah, Shovel Knight, that's true. I really want to see Shovel Knight in the game. Uh, Shovel Knight is, like, he he actually has, uh, like, potential for a really unique moveset. Um... Because like he got he's got his shovel like he could bounce on other characters basically like I think that would yeah. be a really cool thing. Um, so yeah, I think. But you already have a shovel character, villager. He also has a shovel move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think shovel knight would be more epic. Yeah, I would really like to see shovel knight. Um, as for other indie characters, I would like to see Shantae. I I think Shantae is a really cool character. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking maybe some Castlevania character would be cool. Hmm. Like maybe like Trevor Belmont or Avo Alucard or like something from Castlevania series. Yeah. Nice. The problem with that though is that Konami just doesn't like to do things anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's the sad thing about that. Um, but yeah. Um, all right. So, what are some stages that you would like to see uh, in in the new game? Like, for mm. example, like if they were to bring back ice climbers, we would obviously see either a returning ice climber stage or a new ice climber stage. Um, if they brought back Wolf, maybe we would see another Star Fox stage. Um, yeah. Okay, and uh, like. With Inklings, we would see obviously see a Splatoon stage. With Arms, we would see an Arms stage. Uh, so yeah. Um, I would like to see like a new Metroid stage, maybe from the new uh, Metroid: Samus Returns. Yeah, that would be interesting, actually. Yeah, or a uh, or a new uh, F Zero stage. Yeah, because please. they've always been like really special. Yeah, I would I would like to see an F Zero stage that isn't a dynamic stage. So, and like an F Zero stage that is actually just a platform in a cool world with cool music, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the Metroid. Uh, no, let's see, F Zero Gym. It's where uh, Captain Falcon goes to get like really buff. <laughs> so it's like yeah, they have cool music and they have like his car is parked and uh, there's like people moving weights in the background. <laughs> is is Port Town Aerodive in the new Smash Bros? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think I'm it's not sure, a, but I think so. Yeah, yeah. I would, I'm, yeah, I would just like to see a new, new F Zero level. Uh, I think that would be cool. Um, I would like to see. Yeah, we have to, we have to get uh, levels from Breath of the Wild and Odyssey. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Definitely, we have to get new stages there. Do you think like uh, what would be a good level from Breath of the Wild? Maybe the the Hyrule Castle final battle place? Yeah, maybe. Um, final battle. Hmm. Yeah, that is weird because like there aren't really any iconic locations. Like there are iconic locations in Breath of the Wild, <laughs> but they're not like small. You know, like they're just yeah. massive, massive uh, locations. You know, but yeah, maybe like this ruined Hyrule Castle would be a cool. Uh, stage from Breath of the Wild. Yeah. As for Breath, uh, as for Super Mario Odyssey, there's an obvious one, and that is New Dog City. <laughs> <laughs> New Dog City. It's is so gonna iconic. happen. We all know it. That would be an awesome stage uh, from Super Mario Odyssey. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So what I would like to see show up in a news in a news in the Smash Bros. case is an actual story mode. Bring back that would be cool. Yeah, bring back like um what's it called? Subspace emissary, but make it better. <laughs> Just make it more <laughs> fun than subspace emissary. 
and actually like the platforming parts of South Space Emissary, they're not fun. Like they're just boring. So what I would like to see is that just make up a silly story with all the Nintendo characters, show us some beautiful new uh, <laughs> CG cutscenes. And then just like make it make it so that we play the battles. Just let us play the battles, and then just the story yeah. happens between. I would like to see. I, that. I think that uh, the Super Smash Brothers Melee uh, Adventure Mode was pretty good. Yeah, but this, that still had a lot of the boring platforming because I think Smash yeah, Bros. But mechanics it was like decent just don't platforming. Work. I I just don't think Smash Bros. mechanics works well for platforming. You're too floaty in Smash Bros. For yeah. good platforming, what, I think. what I liked about that is that it's like it's less platforms uh, than it, than the subspace emissary because I think the subspace emissary was like really long. Yeah, levels. there were these like a long vertical levels as well where you just jump, wait for him to land, yeah. jump, wait for him to land, <laughs> jump, wait for him to land. <laughs> because of the floating like, nature, you just have to wait so much because you're floating so much in the game. Yeah, and that was Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the floatiest yeah. of the games also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, I think like, make it shorter than the Subspace Emissary, at least the levels. Yeah. Um, shorter and more compact. Yeah, I would just personally like to see, like, yeah, silly story with battles. And maybe even, like, if you happen to lose a battle, maybe there are, like, branching paths in the game. That would also be cool, like, in the story. Like, it's, let's say yeah. that there's a battle between Mario and Bowser. And if Mario wins, the, the, bad, the story goes one way. And if Bowser wins, the story goes another way. That would be cool as well. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I think that... Bad and... Oh, not really. Are there any other things? Yeah, let's, let's just... Mm. Uh, Smash Tour? Let's just remove that. Like, we don't need Smash Tour. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Smash Run. I wasn't really a huge fan of Smash Run. Um, but yeah, Smash Run. Smash Run could come back, but let's not bring back Smash Tour. Do you remember Smash <laughs> Tour? Is that the one where you like get things and then you finally fight when you have like collected stat boosters? No, that's that's Smash Run. Uh, Smash okay. Tour is that uh, bad attempt at a Mario Party. Oh yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah, I think yeah. we played that like one time when you were at my place, so... <laughs> it was just boring as hell. Like, it was just a not good Mario... It was just a bad Mario part. It was just a bad board game, it was just a boring... Uh, f like, mini games as well, so... Yeah, it was, it was bad. I did not like it at all. <laughs> I played it like once. <laughs> once is enough. Yeah. It's like meth. Don't do it even once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So there are. Are there anything else? I don't know. Uh, I think it would be really cool to see a game Smash game on the Switch. Yeah, it's a thing. And I platform. really hope they do it. And I mean, it would be nice to see a port because then we can have it sooner rather than later. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think, other than all the uh, the people that are like. Like, other than the the hardcore Melee fans, I feel like everyone yeah. thinks Smash Bros. Wii U is the best version of Smash Bros. Yeah. It is just the most complete version. It's the most uh, uh, stable version. It's the most balanced version of Smash Bros. Um, because the thing, I've said this a lot of times about Melee, I think Melee is just like, it's a battle of who can make the most glitches. Like, it's not a, it's not a Smash Bros anymore, it's just super glitch bros. <laughs> you know, yeah. like you're you, just exploiting you, uh, you the game. You abuse, you abuse the, the glitches to, to make you move faster and be able to do... Uh, more impressive combos. Yeah, and I mean, and I is, agree that it is impressive in its own in its own right, but it's not the game. It's not the same game. It's not the way it's supposed to be played. I mean, yeah, I think you said it pretty well with balanced. Super Smash Four is the most balanced version of the game because it actually likes, it actually works, and the characters are pretty balanced. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I'm yeah. not really that um, close to the. Uh, the competitive part of Smash Bros, but 
at least back when the ge- the game came out, like everyone's tier lists were different. Like no one could really decide on a good tier list. Yeah, and I until th- like uh, Diddy Kong become like became uh, <laughs> broken. But nowadays they patch that. Yeah, thing. exactly, and they can like, they can patch so things and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, and I I think the fact that people can really um can really decide on a definitive uh tier list just says like yeah this is a really well balanced game yeah so yeah so, yeah i think uh before we stop i think there's a a good thing to actually address so what if this were to be a new smash bros game what are some changes like some major changes to characters that we would like to see in an entirely new Smash Bros. game. That's an interesting topic. So, for example, I would like to see Mario... I would like them to see to see them remove the flood and maybe bring in the roll move from Odyssey. Yeah. That would be interesting, I think. Mario should definitely take inspiration from Odyssey and Link should definitely take inspiration from... Uh... Breath of the Wild. Yeah, because yeah. Twilight Princess was like forever ago. Yeah, and he's still using that design. Yeah. So uh, yeah, back to skins. I would love to see them uh, have the Breath of the Wild skin available mm. in in uh, in Smash Bros. But yeah, another change I would like to yeah. see is uh, Gandorf. I thought he has been. He has been due for a change in like since Brawl. Yeah. I mean, it, they should have changed him in Brawl and they didn't. And then they didn't change him in Super Smash Wii U. So, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was something we talked about before Ganondorf was announced. Like, we were certain that they were actually going to switch, that they were actually going to change him up. They were actually going to make him a sword user. <laughs> Yeah. But it didn't happen. That did not happen. Still a Ganondorf clone. Yeah, it was no, really disappointing. Uh, Captain Falcon. Yeah, he's just... So, like, he is a Captain Falcon clone. Like, it is such a weird pick for a clone as well. <laughs> yeah. I think if I would like to see... If they were to make a new Super Smash Bros. Uh, game, I think the most important thing would be that they, like... Uh, reinvented the the main characters yeah i think a lot and, and that's something that we actually saw a lot of in game. in the new smash bros game like a lot of the the new characters like mega man and pac-man and a lot of these characters they're actually very true to their games yeah while if you have like these original characters that came out in in and like they came all the way from the first Smash Bros. Like Mario, Mario doesn't really control a lot like Mario does, you know. No, it's you have to like understand all the like small spin-off games he's been in yeah. to actually understand his move set. Yeah, and I think actually when you look at like uh, uh, Link's move set, like there are a lot of Zelda two moves in there, but. Um, yeah, like, um, a lot of these characters, especially, like, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong has evolved so much since his original uh, design in Smash Bros. Like, I would love to see them completely reinvent Donkey Kong and base him on his Donkey Kong Country Returns version. Yeah. Where he's doing, like, the roll move and all these different moves that he has in that game. And, yeah. So yeah, I, I would like to see a lot of different, just completely reimagined characters. Yeah, I would see, and I think like they really made a lot of characters for the last one, but now I would just like them to focus on like the original ones and maybe add more later. But it's like we don't have the issue that we had in Melee, where it was like there's too few characters. Now it's more like. You have a lot. Oh, of, there are have, so many characters. Yeah, there are so many characters to the point where there's actually it's actually hard to think about new characters. Yeah. Yeah. That's saying something because it's always been like, what characters do you want to smash? Yeah. Like, I want Naruto. I want Sasuke, <laughs> and I want Sakura too. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I but, think a, a way a great way to finish this off is what are some completely pie in the sky characters that you would like to see in Smash Bros. 
Donald Duck. <laughs> actually, uh, a, a, a character is actually very likely to show up in Smash Bros. is Banjo Kazooie. Especially because um, back when people actually said like that they, they would like to see Banjo Kazooie show up in that game, Phil Spencer actually went out and said that, <laughs> yeah, I would love to see Banjo Kazooie show up in Smash Bros. And my thing is like, what if that actually happened? <laughs> like, I think the the biggest problem there is that it's on Nintendo's side. Like, if Nintendo actually wants to have a Xbox character, because he is essentially an Xbox character now. Yeah. So if they would actually support having an Xbox character in that in their game, because I think uh, Xbox and Phil Spencer would be totally up to do it. Smash Bros is one of the biggest games on the planet. Like. To deny having one of your characters show up in their <laughs> game would be an idiotic move. So yeah. I think they would be totally up to do that, especially since they're making Minecraft for Switch now and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, and maybe this like uh, conversation between Microsoft and Nintendo that's shown up now between my went between Minecraft and uh, with Minecraft being on Switch, maybe that actually has opened up the conversation of Ben Kisui showing up in Smash Bros. I hope so. Because I think Ben would be a great addition. Yeah, I think Ben Kazooie would be a really cool and unique character as well. Yeah. So yeah, I hope it happens. But yeah, uh, some yeah pie in the sky character. What is something you would like to see show up? Um, no, I I want uh, like a a Castlevania character. That would be really fun. Yeah, I would like to see. I want to see uh, Jack and Daxter, <laughs> Sly <laughs> Cooper. I want to see some PlayStation characters. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> Exodia, the Forbidden One from Yu-Gi-Oh. You have to pick all the four characters have to be Exodia parts. Uh, and then you have to get the fifth part out of a Pokeball. The fuck? And then you instantly win. What the fuck is Exodia? You've never played Yu-Gi-Oh? No, I didn't. Exodia is like when you have all Exodia parts in your hand, you win instantly. It's uh, it's basically uh, what Yugi like he, he used it against Kaiba to like it just win without being in a good position. He's like, oh, I have Exodia, I win. Okay, sounds balanced. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have reached two and a half hours here now, so I think it's about time to actually finish this episode but yeah this is a great episode it's a lot of fun to talk about all this nerdy shit um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah um anything else you want to add to the smash bros discussion uh, it was great fun to talk about the characters and and just the gameplay overhauls of the games yeah. and if it's gonna be ported but i think i've said Pretty much everything. Yeah, I think... Uh, okay, the final thing here, and I've said the final thing three times now, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, when do you think Smash Bros. for Switch will come out? Uh, 2018. Yeah, I agree with 2018, but I like when... I think it's a spring 2018 game. Or... I think it's probably going to be late 2018. Hmm. Like uh, November my thing, or December. My thing against that is that, first of all, they want Smash out on the console as fast as possible. Uh, and I think putting it in the fall will actually damage their real fall titles. Like, yeah. let's say, I don't know what, um, let's say Metroid Prime 4 comes out. There is, like, let's say that's their fall game this year. Uh, if they yeah. release Smash Bros. like just a month ahead or something, or a month after, that's going to damage Metroid. Like doesn't matter how much that's people true. like Metroid, like that's going to damage every game around it. Yeah. So I think it's actually a very smart thing for them to bring it out either in the spring or summer. Oh, yeah, summer sounds about right. But I think, I think maybe if they actually announce that they're going to make a new... I think maybe they announce it in the beginning of the year to hype interest. Yeah, they usually the have Switch. a direct in, Janu in January. Yeah, so maybe they'll announce it then yeah. maybe it will be out like in the summer or something like you said yeah. in between big uh, big releases i could also see it be an announcement at e3 and then come out in something like august or september 
Yeah. Because they announced Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle at E3, and they also announced Metroid Samus Returns at E3, and those came out in August and September, respectively. So that could be a very, very um, likely thing to happen as well. So yeah, it's possible. Um, we'll see. Like, uh, we'll have to uh, go back to this video and just be like... <laughs> we'll see how right we Actually, were. Actually, it was released 2017. It's released the day after this video was posted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, that's it for this discussion about Smash Bros. and all the things we talked about earlier in the episode. So yeah, if you liked the video, please like the video. And uh, subscribe <laughs> to Rebreak. And uh, you can follow me at uh, Dennis underscore Lofric on Twitter. And uh, um, yeah, do you want to plug something? Um, I don't really use uh, Twitter much. So just follow Dennis. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And subscribe to the channel. That's nice. Yeah. Um, all right. So we'll see you next time. And uh, see you. Yeah, have a good day.